Everybody wants to be an Italian at some times in their lives. Well, I can't help you with that, but I surely can help you being an Italian in the kitchen. And today's dish, giambotto di verdura with lots of vegetable and filet mignon, will make just that out of you. So stay with me and I'll show you. I came here, I was 12 years old and had the opportunity to become fully American, to understand fully the American culture, to always maintain my Italian culture very strongly. And I think what gives me the strength of communicating to you and is that I have this passion for food, but I also have this understanding of two cultures and I bring them together through food at our table. Che bellezza! Buongiorno, benvenuti, benvenuti to my kitchen, benvenuti alla mia cucina. And you have a lot of vegetables here, very Italian, and you have a big piece of meat here, not very Italian. But this is the Italian-American cuisine. And giambotto is uh, a recipe that I used to cook in my restaurants in 1971 when I first opened my restaurant, which was Bonavia, which was in Queens. Uh, I used to cook this dish and everybody loved it. It was really an Italian-American dish. So we're going to begin with potatoes. We're going to have zucchini and onions and peppers and basil and garlic and all of that. And I'll saute all of that and then chunks of filet mignon and saute that and then ultimately just dress it all together. And it's going to be wonderful. Uh, I have some potatoes uh, uh, parboiling here and uh, I think they're just right. Let me just... fish them out here. And I'm going to do this with two pans. Can you do it one pan, one after another? You could, but two pans really is going to expedite things. And you want a lot of caramelization, so, you know, I want a lot of hot surface. A little bit of olive oil here in the pan. And a little bit of olive oil here. I'm going to just Caramelize the potatoes in this oil. Let me get it nice and hot. And here I have some onions. And I want big pieces. I want the onions chunky. I want, I don't want the vegetables to sort of disintegrate. You want the vegetables to be cooked, but to have a nice bite and crunch. I'm just gonna Cut the garlic in half, add it right here. A bit of salt. Now let's address the meat. Now this is a whole filet mignon and the best part of the filet mignon is of course this part. So this dish is really ideal for all the other, the other parts of the filet mignon. So if you buy the whole one, you want to save this, this is the traditional Chateaubriand or filet mignon where you just roast the whole thing and then slice it. The other, the other parts can cut off and save it and make a great giambotto. Although I think we have a lot of guests coming for dinner tonight so I'm going to cut off a piece, an extra piece, and I'm going to put the best part away. And again, I want big chunks. Okay. Now here we have a little bit of Silver skin, let's cut that out. I'm gonna cut this tip away because the tip is really tough here. Okay, let me cut that away. Let's go back, and I'm gonna be going back and forth, so you follow me because I'm gonna be going back and forth, caramelizing all of this. I think that the, the onions, um, they're a little on the crunchy side and they'll finish really cooking right in here. Let 
potatoes also. I will continue. Let me just cut some peppers. You know, um, in Italy, sometimes I, I just see them rip vegetables apart like that. I don't know, does it make a difference? But it just feels good sometimes. And uh, I kind of like sometimes this approach to, to rough cutting the vegetables rather than just being 100% on the square. And this will all look like a mosaic. I know I talk in terms of food, sometimes as music, as art. But I guess um, they're related, you know, beauty is beauty, whether it's in food, whether it's in music, whether it's in, it's in art. All set with this. And add the peppers. Let me do the zucchini. The zucchini, um, you know, zucchini, Again, you want a nice, firm zucchini. And you want them small and narrow. And try to get those. And make sure that this stem is nice and green, just like this one. That means that it is fresh. And the longer the stem, the better it is. Because the zucchini, even though it's waiting in the store to be bought, it, it has uh, still some source of food, of water. And you see, this is perfectly, it has, doesn't have, once it begins to have those big seeds in it, um, then it's problematic. And in that case, then you remove the seeds and you use just the outer part. Okay. A little bit of olive oil and we'll fry the zucchini. Now, I chose these vegetables. Um, could you put some eggplant in it? I would say so, yes. Um, if you like scallions, that's also a good addition. Uh, I would have been here with pots and pans until tomorrow morning if I did all of the vegetables. Not that it takes so long, it's just that I, you know, I want to take the time to show you each and every step. So uh, think of it, you know, what I put in it, but you could put in scallions. I think scallions would be really very good with this. Um, some broccoli, well, broccoli maybe not so good. But excellent, yes. Bit of salt. Okay, I think the peppers are done. Let me just put them right in. Okay. Now this pan, uh, I think, has, has had it. I'm gonna set a new pan because that one needs some washing. The zucchini also. Just... Yes, just about done. They're a little al dente, but that's that's fine. We are ready for the meat. Now, when you sear the meat off, and you do that the last, um, I put no salt on the meat because salt, you know, pulls out. Especially when you when you when you grill steaks, that salt pulls out the uh, juices, and we'll salt it later. You want quick, high heat. You want to seal it off and let the juices be in there. And of course, at this point, you can give it the cooking temperature that you want. If you want it medium, medium rare. I think that the first pieces are cooked enough for me.
Okay, I can salt them at this point, I think. Okay. Put the meat right in the in the vegetables. And I think these are done. I think this is still all very warm. I could just put it back in the pan if you feel that it is that it is cool. You think that the vegetables are cool? Should we put them, give them a little? Okay. One last. Okay. And at this point, get some fresh basil going. Just give it the freshness of basil. I think that's enough. A little bit of heat, just a little bit of oil, a little oil, a little bit of peperoncino, a little bit of the basil. You see, it all falls, you, you thought I never, I was never gonna get finished, that I had all these pots going and all that, and I'm talking to you and I'm getting it done, and it's, and it's wonderful, it looks wonderful, and it smells delicious. Uh, I think we're ready for the plating. Let me get a nice uh, plate. And this is, of course, family style. Uh, uh, a warm plate, nice large plate. And let's just ladle it out. And this is Italian American style. Giambotto, Italian American style. Uh, Giambotto, what does that mean? Uh, Giambotto means really uh, something that's all, all mixed up, and this is in a sense, at the end, this is what comes out. Okay. Now, every little bit on the plate. Now, I need to look at, you know, <laughs> when, I, when I cook something and I put it out, then I need to look at it. I says, okay. And it tells me, what, what does it need? It really basically doesn't need anything because it has just that, that wonderful shine and all that that, I'm, that I always look for. Now let me get some, maybe a little color. Does it need a little color on this side? Just like that? Okay. It looks wonderful and it smells wonderful. And of course I have to taste it for you. And I'm gonna tell you exactly how it tastes. And I wanna get a piece of meat and whatever else comes with it. I'm not gonna be choosy. Actually, I am choosy. I'm going for, what am I going for for the pepper? Mm. Just a little bit. It is wonderful. The meat is just done right. I don't like it too rare. Just done right uh, with the flavors of the vegetables, the sweetness of the vegetables. Just perfect. A little peperoncino. Just perfect. And of course, a dish like this, like you need a nice glass of red wine. So. Really good, I'm gonna have another piece. Uh, I know I'm making you hungry, but I am going to have another piece. And this time with zucchini. And then that's it, I promise I won't have any more. Mm. This will make an Italian out of you for sure. It's time for dessert. Tartuffi, you've had. Tartuffi is really truffles, you know, those sort of truffles that you shave on risotto. But tartuffi also means those ice cream little balls stuffed with oh, pistachio and hazelnuts and cherries that you had in Italian restaurants. And they're really very simple to make. So 
let me show you now. Uh, let me address first pistachios. Pistachios, this, these are pistachios in a shell. They're very Italian uh, in Sicily. Some of the best pistachios come out of Sicily. And it's a very Italian dessert flavor. Uh, pistachio, coffee, amaretto, very Italian. So you just peel them right out of here. You blanch them. This is hot water. You just drop them in, in hot water. And then you peel them. They peel quite easily, see? So these are pistachios that have been blanched and peeled, and then you toast them to really maximize their flavor. And in this case, then we chop them up to stuff our tartufo. And uh, of course, it's best if you make your own ice cream, but store-bought ice cream it's perfectly fine, works perfectly fine. Keep a, a, a sort of a container of warm water where you can dip your ice uh, a scoop in and out of after each dip, and it facilitates and it cleans after. Get a good scoop of ice cream. And I'm gonna fill this pistachio ice cream with pistachios and chocolate. Pistachio and chocolate go good together. Just I'm gonna dip my, my finger right in the water. Make a little hole, fill it with pistachios and chocolates. Okay, I think that has enough. Let me just use this to facilitate the closure of it. Okay. And, and let's go to the next flavor. The next one. I'll do chocolate ice cream, and I'll fill it with chocolate and hazelnuts. And of course, always toast the hazelnuts, for that matter, any nut, before you bake with it or even cook with it. You really maximize the, the flavor. Okay. Just make a hole and put some chocolate right in there. in some hazelnuts. You know, it's the surprise of it all, once you break into it. Uh, it's it's the, the surprise of what you find in there. Okay, seal it off. And so the next one will be filled with amarena cherries and amaretto, almonds and cherries, really goes good together. And these cookies, you're familiar with these cookies, you've had them and you can buy them and just take the back of the Chop it coarsely, okay? And this will fill with vanilla ice cream. Put the amarena cherry, and the amarena cherries are amarena amaro, means really bitter. They're the sour cherries in a sense, but they're uh, sort of in a syrup. In Italy, they put them in a syrup. They're used a lot for desserts. And just stick in one or two pieces of the amaretto. Let's. And the amaretto, of course, has that bitter almond flavor, which is delicious also. Okay, seal it off. And now we'll put them back in the freezer to freeze solid, and then we'll roll them. The filter tufi should be nice and stiff by now, so we can roll them, but we're gonna, before we go and get them out, you know, they're sensitive, uh, let me tell you what I did here. We're gonna roll them, each one we're gonna roll them in one of these. This is very finely ground pistachio. That's the pistachio that was left over. Uh, you grind it very finely in a coffee grinder uh, or in a food processor. This, of course, is chocolate, and it's chopped fine, or again, with a coffee grinder, get it very fine and give yourself some space because we're gonna be rolling them right in here. And this is very finely ground, tart, uh, the um, amaretto. This is very finely ground amaretto. All right, I'm all set. Get them out. Let me go in the freezer. Okay, let's see, let's start this way. Now let me get with the, the pistachio. Number one, and try to handle it as little as possible with your with your hand. Okay. 
Now these are the hazelnut and chocolate. Quick, oi, yay. This one needs a little bit of, of coaxing. And this is the crushed amaretto, and this is the amarena filling, amarena and amaretto. The amarena cherry and the amaretto filling. I'm going to put them right back in the freezer before they melt. Okay, uh, let's pistachio one, and we have to work. Have some whipped cream here. Just a tad. Okay, I think that's enough. There's plenty of ice cream. And of course, some of the amarena cherries. One, that's enough. Three, like that. Ooh, ooh. And just drizzle a little bit of the sauce around. Maybe we'll just to. Uh, a little bit of the pistachio, a little bit of the amaretto. Now, you can go through all of this, or you can just give them one, cut it in half, and then top it, or you can give them a selection on the table, let them top it themselves. Uh, it could really be fun. Uh, and you really, it's the texture, but well, let me taste it. Let me taste it. Let's see, which one do I like? I like amarena cherries and amaretto, so I'm going to go for this one. Really good. It's, it's good. I mean, it's it's very very Italian. Even though we use the ice cream, simple vanilla ice cream, but it's very Italian. The amaretto, really good. Really really good. And since this is melting quickly, and I need to bring it to the table, and of course I want you to join me. So, tutti a tavola a mangiare e fare un dolce far niente. Dolce far niente, sweet nothings. Do, sweet, sweetly doing nothing, actually. That's what it translates in Italian. And sometimes in the afternoon, when they're having uh, a little uh, vin santo or after a little coffee sitting on the porch, it's a dolce far niente. So, tutti a tavola a mangiare. <laughs>